Hey everybody, today we're going to be watching a video by John Stossel, Electric Cars, Inconvenient Facts, Part 1. Let's see what this is all about. Electric car sales are up 66%. You're going to want to jump in the back. And now my president says the future is electric and there's no turning back. To make sure of that, some states are banning gas powered cars. Gasoline cars are driving us toward climate chaos. We actually have to stop using fossil fuel vehicles. California's governor made that an executive order. We will eliminate the sales of internal combustion engines. Governments. I'm sure this is going to go extremely smooth, banning gasoline, car, gasoline vehicles. Everywhere say they plan to do that. The government has a vision for a future where all our cars will be electric. But this is just magical thinking. It can't happen. In this video and the next, we point out five inconvenient magical thinking it can't happen those are strong words those are that's a that's a strong that's a hot take right out the gate let's see what he says in facts about electric cars that politicians and green activists Take your oil, go to just don't understand electric cars are amazing physicists like mark mills of the manhattan institute do understand he says the trend to electric is a good thing but it won't change the future in any significant way with respect to oil use or carbon dioxide emissions. That's inconvenient fact one. More electric cars will hardly dent oil use. If all of us bought electric cars, would it make any difference? So the world has 15, 18 million electric vehicles now. It could go to 300 million, maybe 500 million vehicles. I don't think it will get that many, but that's the aspiration. That would reduce world oil consumption by about 10%. That's not nothing, but it doesn't end the use of oil for the world. Because most of it's used for what? Flying airplanes, driving. <laughs> don't talk about airplanes. Bro, don't talk about airplanes. We're talking about electric cars. If you bring up airplanes, if you bring up airplanes, that completely negates all the virtue signaling that you could do in your entire life. You buy all the electric cars that you want. One, one Boeing flying from New York to LA just negated all your virtue. Buses, big trucks, the mining equipment to get the copper to build the electric cars. So mining equipment can actually run on electric and the buses, they could run on electric. The big trucks, they could be electric. So I, I don't really know what they're getting at with that. It's all oil. I don't know about airplanes though. Could you ever fly an electric airplane? Tired, and it won't change because those trucks last 40 years. And even if all vehicles somehow switch to electricity, there'd be another problem because despite what we've heard. Further, faster, cheaper, and greener. Electric cars are not all that green. One reason is because electricity isn't all that green. I'm amazed talking to people who are all excited about their electric car and they say, and I'm not polluting. <laughs> and I say, where do you get the electricity from? And they don't know. They don't know that most of America's electricity comes from fossil fuels, natural gas and coal. Just 12% comes from wind and solar. Yet auto companies tell us electric vehicles in general are. And if you say, well, let's just switch everything to wind and solar. I don't know if you heard a couple years ago what happened in Texas. They have a lot of solar electricity and it got cold, they had a cold snap and it just wrecked their whole power grid. So, and I don't know if you know a lot about wind turbines, but those are, okay, for example, if you drive through California, there are big fields of wind turbines and those things break down. There's tons of wind turbines that just break down. I don't know. Are better and more sustainable for the environment. She's a Ford engineer. She's not ignorant. Well, actually, she probably is ignorant in the literal sense of the word. She's not stupid, but ignorance speaks to what you know. You have to mine somewhere on Earth 500,000 pounds of minerals and rock to make one battery. And most of this mining isn't done in the U.S. American regulations make it nearly impossible. 
So it's done other places, polluting those countries. And worse, ingredients in batteries are mined in places that enslave people and use child labor. So besides the child labor and the, uh, and the slave labor, this is something that I mentioned in comments uh, in, other in other videos about electric vehicles where maybe the pollution isn't where you can see it because you're driving a car that doesn't have any emissions coming out of the tailpipe because there's no tailpipe, but we're still shifting the pollution to another country. They're still having to mine, they're still having to mine these, uh, like there's still pollution involved. It's just in Africa, it's just in Asia. An army of children are at the heart of the mining production. Wearing no shoes and in the most wretched conditions. Most yeah, there was a, I'm going to do a whole video on stupid ass comments, but there were, there were people saying, oh, everybody that has a problem with electric vehicles just wants to, everybody that has a problem with electric vehicles just wants to talk about the children in the Congo, but we don't really know where that cobalt comes from. Are you fucking stupid? Like, it's a, it's a figment of your, it's just a story, it's all made up. And then there's major documentaries about this, about this problem of cobalt mining in the Congo where they're just using these little children. Look at, look at. Most Americans proudly driving electric cars don't know about this. They just don't want mining done near them. And let me just harp on this for a second. People will say, oh, well, are you gonna get rid of your cell phone? Bruh, my cell phone already exists. But if I could snap my fingers and just make all cobalt mining not involve this, I would. And I'm not the one producing cell phones. And I'm not just buying hundreds of cell phones, right? Like I have one cell phone. I literally bought it before I even knew about this thing, about this issue. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. But am I, you know, what am, what am I one person supposed to do whenever you've got people in the comments saying, oh, well, you don't even know where that cobalt came from. You've got a million, millions of people like that who are in denial about the problem, won't even admit there's a problem, or don't even know there's a problem, but I'm the one who's supposed to, like, what am I supposed to do about that? Other than tell you guys, hey, they're using little children to, little children are giving their lives so that you can have a lithium powered car or a lithium powered cell phone. That's all I can do. I can just tell you guys about it. And if you don't like it, which fucking nobody likes it, literally almost nobody in the comments likes this, uh, likes this topic. They think that I'm a, a Luddite or I'm, I just hate electric vehicles. Dude, I don't give a shit about electric vehicles versus gasoline versus diesel. I don't care about that. I'm a mechanic. I know what's involved with working on cars and the, you want, bruh, you want to know the answer to all your vehicle problems? Everybody needs to just start making 1998 Toyota Corollas and 1998 Nissan Sentras. Just everybody consolidate your efforts and make 30 mile per gallon 1998 Toyota Corollas and Nissan Sentras and all your, all your pollution problems are going to be mitigated to the max. But wherever it's done, mining is a dirty business that adds lots of carbon to the air. If you're worried about carbon dioxide, the electric vehicle is emitted 10 to 20 tons of carbon dioxide before it even gets to your driveway, before you drive the first mile and plug it in the first time. Carbon dioxide produced by the mining and the manufacturing and the shipping. Exactly. And this is a thing that just gets ignored by EV cultists. It's like, what about, so let's, let's just pretend that little children aren't poisoning themselves to mine the cobalt for your, for your electric battery. What about the trucks? What about the ships? 
Volkswagen published an honest study. They point out that the first 60,000 miles or so are you're driving an electric vehicle. That electric vehicle will have emitted more carbon dioxide than if you just drove a conventional vehicle in the first place. You have to own it for a while before the electric part starts to win. You have to own it for at least 100,000 miles, and then the electric part wins by some. So it doesn't get you a zero emissions vehicle. It's reduced the emissions then by 20 or 30 percent, which is not nothing, but it's not zero. No, it's not close to zero. In our next video, more inconvenient facts about electric cars. Politicians make impossible assumptions about batteries and the electric grid. Hope you like this video. Now, I, I want to know how many Teslas are making it to 100,000 miles. Is that because electric vehicles just can't make it to 100,000 miles? That's not even what I'm saying. I'm going to say that shitty, any shitty car can't make it to 100,000 miles. Any shitty car is more likely to get scrapped long before it's going to get to 100,000 miles. Let's go watch part two. You think every car should be electric? Well, here are some inconvenient facts you probably don't know. This is part two of our series on electric cars. This is the future now. We keep hearing. The future of the auto industry is electric, electric. There you go. Joe Biden said it. You know it's true. And battery technology. Battery technology. That's key because we need to store the electric power. But storing large amounts of energy in batteries has a problem. Batteries are really lousy at storing energy. They leak energy constantly. They leak and they don't hold a lot. Physicist Mark Mills says electric cars are great, but... Oil begins with a huge advantage over the chemicals that are in a battery. Oil has about 5,000% more energy in it per pound. And we see this in electric cars. Electric cars' battery weighs 1,000 pounds. It's what the battery weighs. It's replacing about 80 pounds of gasoline. All right, you're talking today, but the batteries are gonna get smaller and better. They've gotten way more powerful, long lasting and affordable. All of this is just a prologue to what the next batteries are going to do. I can't wait. Will they be something like the one Iron Man has? It really all comes back to the battery. Like that's, that's the hinging point. Nobody's saying electric motors aren't great. Nobody's saying that an electric car can't be great, it's the battery that's holding it back. Because an electric car is just, it's just a car, right? And it has electric motors. And electric motors have been around for, oh, I think over a hundred years probably, but it's the battery that's holding it back. Yeah, I can fly. Iron Man with the, uh, the power pack that he puts in his chest or the Terminator. Could happen. Things improve. Engineers are really good at making things better, but they can't make them better than the laws of physics permit. That will never happen in any place except... He's talking about the laws of physics. Let's just remember, this guy is a physicist. Comic books. That's inconvenient fact four. He didn't really get into deep... He didn't really get into detail about that. Miracle batteries, powerful enough to replace fossil fuels, are a fantasy. Because nature is not nice to humans, we store energy for when it's going to be really cold or really hot. The people who imagine an energy transition would want to build windmills and solar panels and store all that energy in batteries. But you do the arithmetic and you find out you need to build about a hundred trillion dollars worth of batteries to store the same amount of energy that Europe has in storage now for this winter. And it would take the world's battery factories about 400 years to manufacture that many batteries. 400 years? You know what? I, I don't really like how they're saying a whole bunch of they're saying a whole bunch of stuff like the laws of physics won't let it happen. He's not really explaining any of this. Years. Politicians don't mention that. That leads to another problem the politicians don't mention. They say every car will be electric. California will require all new cars sold to be zero emission vehicles. If that were somehow to happen. That means a lot more electric vehicles drawing power from the grid. But the grid is already limited. So limited that last summer, California's governor told people, don't use your electric car. 
asking residents to avoid charging their EVs in order to conserve energy. Roughly speaking, you have to uh, double your electric grid to move the energy out of gasoline into the electric sector. No one is planning to double the electric grid in California, so there'll be rationing. Rationing. When there isn't enough electricity, cities will simply turn some of the power off. That's inconvenient. And then it's just me and my 1994 Toyota Corolla just driving around while all you clowns with your Teslas are sitting at home. Hell yeah. In fact, five, we just... Stay home, Tesla boy. Just don't have enough electricity for all electric cars. And we'll have even less of it if we try to get all our electricity from renewable energy like wind and solar. Our president says... We're going to achieve a carbon pollution-free electric sector by the year 2035. And all of the media believe it. It's amazing that all these smart people and supposed leaders say these things. It's upsetting. It really is. The whole thing really seems quite brain dead because you want to power your car with electricity powered by fossil fuels. And then you say, oh, well, no, we'll just get solar panels and we'll get wind turbines. But what about the pollution involved with producing solar panels and wind turbines? It's been an extraordinary accomplishment of propaganda, and there's no other word for it. Like, those things don't last forever. Oil solar and panels gas and wind turbines. It's going to take everything we know and love. Wind and solar, renewable versus oil and gas. It's, it's almost infantile. It's really, it, it's distressing because it's so silly. Because even if engineers invent much better wind turbines and solar panels and power lines and batteries. You're still drilling things. You're still digging up stuff. You're still building machines that wear out. We're still driving big trucks, whether you drill a gas well or build a wind turbine. It's, it's all the same, really. It's just big machines to make lots of energy for humanity. It's not magical transformation. In many respects, the parts that aren't different are worse, unfortunately. The politicians are making us pay more to do things that hurt the environment. You're up going back to coal. Burning coal in homes and open stoves because they're so afraid they're going to freeze this winter. People fearful of winter shortages wait for days and nights to stock up on heating fuel. Lines going for miles in Poland. These are people picking up coal to take home to be sure they won't freeze this winter. This is crazy. So what we've done now is had our energy systems designed by bureaucrats instead of by engineers. And what we're getting is worse energy, more expensive energy, and higher environmental impacts. That's what we're doing. As for electric cars, I like them. Maybe I'll buy one, but I won't pretend it'll make me some kind of environmental hero. There'll be lots more electric cars. That's the real problem is the, uh, it's the virtue signaling. That's what drives me nuts. Like, oh, look at me. I just spent $100,000 on this electric vehicle that's saving the environment. It's like, no, you could have bought something that has already been produced and that would do more for the environment. Like a 1994 Corolla. ...in the future, and there should be, because that'll reduce demand for oil, which is a good thing. But when you do the math, the arithmetic on the scales of demand to operate a society with billions of people, with five or six billion people who are live in poverty, we can't imagine. When you want to give them a little bit of what we have, the energy demands are off the charts big. We're going to need everything. Everything includes fossil fuels. We hope you like this two-part series. If you want to help us make more videos like that, click that button. So what do you guys think about these inconvenient facts? Are they facts? Are are, do you think that these guys are lying? Are they ignorant about something? I'm sure you're going to tell me in the comments down below. Just go nuts, guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Keep an eye up the hill.